Hey everybody! Uh, hello and welcome back to Bushwhacker Weekly with Nick and George is not here. She's fine, just, just a little stressed. Maybe she'll talk about it next stream, but nothing to worry. Uh, so you just got me some familiar faces in chat here. Uh, hi Barb, glad to see you made it. New handle, Nova Scotia Barb. I heard you like Nova Scotia. Great place, never been. But I've heard lots about it. Uh, Incredible Goblins, welcome back. Hello. Lynx is the hero. Hey, always good to see you in chat. And I think I saw Fly Baby in there. Yes, hello, hello. Uh, Monty Fromage, yeah, the music is very tranquil. It's from the forest in Bushwhacker 2. It's very soothing. And it's got farming. And do you uh, help an up and coming village? It's uh, on those respects, quite like uh, Stardew Valley. All right. Uh, the welcome back. I already said that. But I'm Nick, the developer for this game. I do all sorts of things like program, design content, and community manage. Typically, George is with me, but she's not. But she usually does the art. Everything art. Everything you see in the game is maybe her or a few other people. And in the top left, you can see that there is a coupon code for, uh, it doesn't say what it's for. It's for a Quester's Satchel. The code is Cubs in Training, exclamation mark. That's because we got new little pets on sale, which we'll talk about later. Um, uh, behind the scenes, we got Sasha moderating the chat as always. Thank you. Glad to have you, Sasha. And why don't we get started here with these Cougar Cub submissions from last week. Spoilers, you can see it already. We got Barb's Axe. 
Glad to have you back, Barb. This is the first mission in a while? Or did we have it last week? I th no, we had it last week, yeah. But it's great to see you back. I love the palette you've chosen for this. It's a, a little, kind of like a brownie gray with a, that kind of lavender -y purple. I like it because it's not terribly saturated. You left the more colors for like the, I want to call this a scarf. It's not a scarf. It's like a bonnet. And the butterfly here. And you've got your signature like smearing furry effect, which you've saved for the, uh, the tail here and like the tufts of fur. Very cool. I also like that you uh, chose uh, green and that kind of peach for the logo here. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a burgundy highlight for the spots here, which is really cool. And look what you've done with the eyes. It's kind of like a, a glow. Looks like you might have used the, the airbrush tool, which is very cool, very creative. I think we have very similar palettes. You'll see mine later. Uh, but excellent work. Glad you have you here. And from the chat, what does chat think of this? Clubs and training, they sell the code. Oh, Michelle Girl, Michelle Girl is here. Hello. Uh, oh, uh, Twinkerdom and Marish Zuzu SH. The coupon code here is just for the game Bushwhacker 2. It won't work in our other games, Champions or Crusaders. Sorry. I guess I could add that to the UI. That might be helpful. And oh, did I add two eyes again? That's the second time I've done that. Oh, I'll have to make another counter for that. Uh, as you can see, uh, stream since muted is five. On a, I'm on a roll. Uh, yes. What was I doing? Feedback on Barb's. Nova Scotia Barb says it's not my best, but it's a goofy one. I think it's actually quite good. You got a good palette here. Lynx is the hero, says, great start to the showcase. I really love how much the reds and purples pop out from the tan. Also love the look of the fur on the tail. Excellent. I agree. Monte Fromage says, that is incredibly adorable. Fantastic work, Barb. Thanks again for your submission. Who's next? Jelly Snail. Excellent. Is Jelly Snail in the chat? Did I see a Jelly Snail? Jelly Snail may not be here. I think... She sometimes arrives a bit late, but fantastic submission as always. Uh, they've taken it to like a the Savannah, uh, and their Cougar Cub is more of a cheetah, it looks like, and that's very excellent execution here. Oh, I love how they did the. Uh, I don't know how they got this effect, but it's like the like like frosting on the tips of the ears, around the the cheeks, on the paws. Very cool, very cool texture. Is it like, did they apply it or is it like a, I'm assuming there's like a magic wand. They magic wanded the section and then just kind of had at it with some kind of special brush. I can't zoom in anymore, who knows? That's fantastic work. Uh, another red butterfly, uh, picked a color that really pops at the rest. If Georgia were here, she'd tell me that uh, the red is a complementary color to green, which is very, prominent in this one. They also shout out to the true logo. Very cool. Oh, and uh, the signature jelly snail highlighting and shading. Oh, some fun stuff on the hat here. Uh, added in some of their own shading here with uh, just like a low transparency brush. Uh, and some highlights around the ears. Very cool. Oh, well, zooming in more. It definitely looks like they use, uh, they do the highlighting and shading manually with like the the paintbrush tool perhaps on a low opacity and they're probably getting that not going outside of the lines by using the wand i'm assuming oh we got some here maybe they just have a delicate hand excellent work I'm highlighting on the cheek here very cool very cool cheetah cub all right what's the chat think about this one Nova Scotia Barb says, oh, cute, jelly snail. Michelle Girl says, that is beautiful. Love it. Triens007 says, nah, airbrush. Airbrush. You got a good eye for that. Wackcrafter says, wow. Links of the Hero says, whoa, this is lovely. 
Really love the cheetah inspired color scheme and the patterns. Shading also rocks. I gotta agree there. The Nine Mile Island says, hi all. I missed doing any art therapy for the last couple weeks. In here late. Glad to have you. I hope to see some submissions in the future, but <laughs> I'm glad to hear you call it art therapy. Yeah, sometimes when you just sit down and color something, it can be really therapeutic as you put it. Black Crafter says that Jelly Snail should do this for a living. So good. This is fantastic. Thank you so much, Jelly Snail. If you see this in hindsight, uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube. And you can also catch the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but uh, Twitch uh, kind of archives them for like a week or something. Because your work is fantastic and we'd love to see more of it. Also some of that texturing on the butterfly. That's cool. And they added spots. That's fun. I wonder if they actually reference like a real kind of species of butterfly. Oh, one last detail. I think they took this background and either intentionally kind of blurred it or it was just really small. But it's kind of cool because it leaves the, uh, the main artwork in focus. The Nymo Island says cheetah sweet. All right. Next one is from Julie. Ah, I see she used the pigments this time. Uh, I wonder if that's the gel pens. It kind of looks more like a, a cray, not crayon, pencil crayon. Oh, maybe it is crayon. Or maybe pigments is an art thing I've never heard of. Very crisp outline or uh, art, like coloring in the lines here. Uh, it's always harder when you're using the the physical medium. I'm very sloppy with my line work, my coloring in the lines and very bright colors. So we've got this very, very bright kind of almost lion-esque golden yellow. Uh, and then like this very rainbowish, almost like a stained glass window, just kind of assortment of colors on the butterfly, which is very cool. And some, oh, something I just picked up on, there's like an additional texturing to the um, sash bonnet scarf. Uh, looks like they just kind of streaked in some different colors. So we've got like blue up here, purple, and some other colors layered on for a really neat texturing effect. And that's very cool. Very cool, Julie. And yeah, we've got some neat colors. We've got the blue and the red for the logo. Excellent stuff. Excellent choice. Uh, this is a picture. I think the... If we look over here, we'll have what the scanned looks like. Uh -oh. Oh. Zoom out. So here's the scan of the same artwork. You can see it kind of sucked out a bit of the colors, which is interesting. You can see a bit more of the texture in the scarf, which is cool. That's very interesting. And yeah, wow. Wackcrafter passed this along on Julie's behalf, uh, saying you should pick the best one. And I really like looking at how scanning versus the photo treats it. And gotta say, I think I like the photo better. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth here. <laughs> uh, so what's the chat say about Julie's submission here? Nova Scotia Barb says, cutie as well. The Nine Mile Island says, ah, Julie, great work as usual. Treezen007 says this is crayon. I think you're right. Yeah, especially when you look at like the hair tuft here. It's like signature crayon texture, which I think is it picking up a lot of whatever you're drawing on top of. Although you get that with pencil crayon, but just not as much, I guess. I'm not a pro. Uh, Wackcraft says it's that is the phone one. This is the phone one? Yeah, it's gotta be. Lots of great camera on your phone. Michelle Go says, love the colors. That butterfly is awesome. Links in here says, this, col this color scheme is so cute. It looks so soft and adorable. The rainbow butterfly is also gorgeous. Black Crafter says, uh, they weren't sure how it was going to transfer with just the phone. So, phone to take the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it totally changed with the scan. Nova Scotia Barb says, nice butterfly colors. Incredible Goblin says, nice butterfly. It is a very cool butterfly. 
Shelga says, whoa, that is totally different. Looks like she hatched it, says Trans007. Yeah, it's, that's very fascinated by it, that's for sure. Colored pencils and gel pen. Colored pencils and gel pens on the color fly, on the butterfly. The color fly, that's what I'm calling it, it's a color fly. Wow, it is wild how much the scan picked up the texture. Wow. Fantastic work as always, Julie, this is great. Uh, love to see you representing the physical mediums here. So hope to see more of your submissions in the future. Oh, this one's mine. Uh, I think I have a very similar color scheme to, uh, who was it? Oh, it wasn't quite the same as Barb's. I was thinking of Barb's. Yeah, so I looked up, uh, I originally looked up like cougar colors, uh, but then I saw, what was, it was a different wildcat. I forget, but they were a bit more grayer. So I thought those would kind of look nice. So I went for the more of like a gray brown and then randomly picked a kind of more contrasting color for the scarf and hat, which I ended up on this kind of greeny teal. And then just wung it. I went for a red and purple butterfly. I did like a darker maroon color for the, uh, the, like the front of the wings and then like a more crimson on the middle and then alternated this kind of purple purple lavender purple lavender on the wings i quite like it uh and then i went in well a i used the purple and the scarf color on the logo i like that because it kind of blends in but still is bold and then i actually added a glow layer don't see much of those and oh no oh no you can see the box around this glow don't look at that don't look at my glow box uh, but I did that with Georgia did a tutorial a while ago. So if you don't remember you add a layer You just draw like circles of the color you want So I did a circle over this eye a circle over this eye, eye and a purple circle over this butterfly And then you just blur the heck out of that layer uh, I got a box here because I wanted to blur it further because it was still pretty solid so I selected it with the the box tool and blurred it further but it like expands the more that you blur it out so it hit the edge of the box and i didn't notice until now but yeah it still looks cool i like it and then i did a simple gradient on the background which i just used white and uh kind of like the teal color a bit of a mint i'm pretty happy with how it turned out what's the community think Nova Scotia Barb says, nice, Nick, as well. Hey, you copied my butterfly colors. Yeah, I did. Let's go back to Barb, see that? Yeah, the red and a bit of purple in there. They're good colors. Uh, Michelle Gross says, love the colors and that butterfly really pops. Love it, Nick. Thank you. Uh, me too, Nick. Good job, Nick. I like the contrast. Nice color palette from the Nine Mile. Thank you. Watch character says purple haze. Jimmy would approve. Good comment. I actually have the funnest shirt. It's a uh, Jimi Hendrix and it's just on the front with his big afro, but the afro is like this really vibrant purple color. It's one of my favorite shirts that I don't wear because it's... I gotta listen to more Jimi Hendrix before I can earn the right to wear that shirt. I've just heard a, a few of his songs with six woes. Links to the Hero says, ooh. This is wonderful. I dig the colors here and the glow on the cub's eyes and the butterfly wings are a great touch. Nice palette with the teal from Incredible Goblins. Thank you. Right crafter saw Jimi Hendrix twice. Excellent. All right, moving on, we have Phagoras. This is a new color scheme and lots of accents here. So Phagoras went for kind of a very dark kind of chocolatey color for the base fur coat and then these this orange accent which is really neat it's kind of inverse of what a lot of other people were doing which is light to dark by a lot of other people i mean three of us yeah so that's really cool very bright color scheme too these are very saturated colors in the best of ways and then kind of a more dialed back furry color and green eyes brightest green eyes here Kind of tying in with the hat and the scarf thing and then also uh the green ties in with the the true logo with an addition of the junior part that's excellent where did you get that i bet Fagris is just ripping it off the uh in-game 
uh, dialogue, the holiday dialogue. And then taking similar, we call it garnish on the dialogue in the game. It looks like they've taken it here and wove it around. And that's such an excellent touch for this one. Super good work here. And we have another purple butterfly as well with some uh, yellow to highlight and contrast it. That's very cool. Anyone else use yellow on their butterfly? Oh yeah, red, yellow. There you go there. That's very cool. Excellent work. And, and then look at these little teal beans. Teal beanos. That's very cool. Very bright, very colorful, very accurate with the border. Nova Scotia Barb says, oh, oh, nice, Fagris, love it. The Nanaimo Island says, rich colors, Fagris. Michelle Gross says, wow, bright colors. The eyes are such beauties, love it. The eyes are very great. One thing Fagris did that I didn't was fill in these, like, the little ch -ch -ch lines, which is kind of sloppy of me. I regret, filled with regret. Am I the only one who did that? Excellent work from Julia on hers. I'm the only one. Everyone else did that. Good job, everyone else. Yeah, the purple butterflies are excellent, Michelle girl. Purple is your favorite color? And you love butterflies. Oh. Excellent. They all look great. I like the Green Ranger outfit here. Says Incredible Goblins. Yeah. It's very on point with the uh, the in-game kind of Junior Racker uniform. Nova Scotia Barb loves the border. Wax Crafters is very intense. Yeah, this is excellent. Thank you so much, Fagoras. Always love seeing what you do with the border and tying in other game elements. Very sweet. Next is Whacked Crafter. Very cool background you've chosen for this. Oh, and uh, I'm assuming these were in the background, these monarch butterflies, and then you it's like perfectly replicated it on yours. Really ties it all together. That's excellent. And you've gone for, oh, it's kind of like a peachy orange. With the dark spots. Very cool. Very cool. And a blue hat with the logo hidden in it. Excellent work. The true logo, I might add. Blue eyes. Yellow scarf. Uh, the yellow uh, really ties in with the uh, monarch butterflies you did here. In fact, like most of the color scheme does. It's very, very uniform. It's excellent. And then... Forgoing the border entirely, we have Cougar Cub by Whacked Crafter. And looks like you colored this too. It's very cool. Doesn't even look like a gradient tool, it just looks fun. And you've added like this uh, shading, drop shadow. It's very cool. Excellent work. Oh, uh, regarding the last one, Links of the Hero just wanted to mention lovely and rich bright colors. And they really pop out of this one. The border design and true logo edit are a really good touch. And then, what, what do people think of Whacked Crafters here? Nova Scotia Barb says, oh, oh Whacked Crafter with such talent. Nice. Michelle Girl, loving the background. Love the butterfly. Soft and subtle color on the cougar. Yeah. Very tame. Uh, like... I like the accent colors are either gray or this peach, the inside of the ears. Nothing too focused, but still quite bright on the outside, on the fur and the clothes. Tying in with the, not outshining the monarch butterflies. Very cool. Links of the Hero says, this is so lovely. Great color scheme. Lovely butterfly design and adorable background. So much to love about it. Also looks like the cover to a children's picture book with the text. So adorable. That's so true. <laughs> Cougar Cub by Whacked Crafter. It's your, your children's book. That's actually really neat. Good observation, Link. And I think we have one more, and it's a Kitsune. Uh, so this is from Incredible Goblins. Don't think you they made one the last few times, but it's great to see their work. This one is excellent. Uh, I knew Georgia wouldn't make it to the stream, so I shared this with her beforehand because it's got the rainbow tails. 
which is super cool. And I like how you kept the uh, the body quite dialed back. It's it's gray, uh, and then kind of surges into these colors. You even like like got the the lighter pastel warm like preparing like surging towards the like actual saturated colors on the the tail tips, and that's really cool. Also, the purple purple on these has like an outline. That's really cool. Actually, yeah. How did you get that outline? Uh, I was going to say it ties in with the, the purple tail, so I don't know if that's like a... It's got a secret mask. Maybe it's like the super evil one. You're saying the super evil one? I don't know. Yeah, but it looks like you've got... Looks, I think it's just around... No, even on this ribbon, you have some kind of like interior highlight. Magic. That's very cool. Yeah, I definitely love that the detail you've done. Have you done it anywhere else? I'm seeing some like fun, like it's lighter here, darker here. Coloring happening. What's your secret? I wonder if you're making a copy of it and blurring it a smidgen, but keeping the line work so it doesn't over. Oh, it's interesting. I don't know. Tell me your secrets, Incredible Goblin. It's very cool. And the bushiest Bushwhacker logo I've seen. It looks like you've pixelated it. But then when you zoom out, it just looks fuzzy. That's really cool. Oh, you got me interested in looking at what kind of weird effects I can apply to mine. It's very neat. Uh... Nova Scotia Barb, please recognize there are two eyes in Cubs in Training, because apparently it's the second time I've added extra eyes. So make sure you spell it that way. Uh, yeah, excellent work here. Um, also, the, the background is so painterly. I think it's like a... Looks like a kind of very stylized kind of smeary uh acrylic painting or oil i don't know art if only jordo's here excellent work and from the community uh oh regarding the last one vlad os says it also reminds them of a coloring book this one yep uh, Nova Scotia Barb says, nice goblin. Uh, goblin says, pride rays. Uh, it's like a cute bear shooting a bunch of hearts out. That's very cool. And Michelle Girl immediately said, ooh, when saw this. So lovely, beautiful, love the rainbow effect. Great color scheme. Blends it all in so well. Great job. What a beauty. Nova Scotia Barb says, hey, goblin. Touchdown. Next to the hero. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. Not only do I love the rainbow colored tails, but also how supernatural the colors all look with the soft glow on the body. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Whackcrafter also loves the logo. Flybaby says, great job on all submissions. Love them all. Uh, Incredible Goblins is giving us some secrets here. Uh, there's a little glow on the whole thing. And the necklace thing was some weird light thing, and it was originally blue, which created the effect. What? <laughs> that didn't tell me anything. Okay, so you took a whole, you took the entire thing and gave it a glow. I said, yeah, I can kind of see it. It's everywhere. And then you were saying the balls were originally blue, and then you did a weird light thing. Well, whatever it is, it makes them look like they have like a pearlescent interior glow thing or like they're harboring dark purple darkness. I don't know. It's very cool. Very cool. Uh, Autistic Swede. The code is just for Bushwhacker 2 uh, in case you were trying to use it in another game. Uh, yeah, people are loving this. Uh, loving all the submissions. I'll do a quick pan so you can see them all. Boom. Nice. Excellent. 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 Very cool. Wow. 
Thank you all for these submissions. It's always great seeing what you submit week to week. So let's move on to the next phase. Um, one sec. Uh, if anyone's tuning in now uh, from the chat, I decided to do like a double notification in the game half an hour in, just in case we missed anyone. So welcome to the stream. Let's get on to the news. Oh, posture. Okay. Uh, transition. So, uh, you can already see, uh, Georgia has prepared next week's, or, or this week's, this stream's coloring sheet. It's the raccoon scout. Look at him. It's adorable. It's like the first raccoon coloring sheet we've had. Uh, the raccoon does look like it's looking at something. I wonder if anyone's going to add that. Would be very cool. And for the news, we got all sorts. Uh, the event, the Junior Bushwhacker event is still underway. Hope you're all enjoying it. Hope you got all those cardboard uh, bushes whacked. There's a whole hundred of them you gotta get. Uh, with my semi-regular whacking, I've got about, uh, I'm at 51, halfway there. So it's been a week, so it's good, it's good, I'm on track. Uh, we have new junior pets on sale here. I'll disable this coloring sheet. Maybe put it back on after. So news, junior bushwhacker event still happening. Wow. Package deals this weekend. The pets. These are the pets that the code is named after. We got the turtle tyke. We got the weasel ranger and we got the foal outrider. All vaguely scout themed animals. I think we, this might be the second turtle. I, I know we have a turtle in a wagon and maybe one or two other turtles. So here's a new fresh turtle pet. Also, I don't think we have a pony. So here's the full outrider pony. Very cute. And the weasel. These are very cute. Remember, if you want all three, got to have them all. We have the combo pack. Save some money. Excellent. If Georgia was here, I'd ask for her opinions or any thoughts she had while creating those adorable little pets, but she ain't. I'm just going to assume she had a fantastic time. Uh, just catching up with the chat here. People loving the submissions. Heck yeah. One sec. News is happening on the stream. On Twitch TV. And next, uh, so still working on the Endless Dungeon. Uh, I did actually finish the multi-hit Big Bushes tech, uh, which is very satisfying because it was a very difficult coding exercise to uh, Circumvent how it was made before, but also still making sure that worked as well as this new bush management system. But with it, hopefully we can start doing some even more interesting bushes. So the multi bushes are in. I don't think they need to be polished. It's just that uh, you hit them, they get like a little health bar and you keep hitting them and you have to kind of churn through their health until you get the, you crack them open and get all the rewards. Uh, one reward for each hit you did. Uh, I'm quite excited about the multi-hit bushes because I made it so uh, a power whack will deal as many hits as the power you put into it. So you could hit it repeatedly with like a normal whack and hit like one health, one health, one health. Or you could save up your power and just like clear the bush immediately, which I think might be a neat way to do that. You can also use the mana whack, uh, which just does uh, six damage to it because they usually hit six bushes. Yeah, I thought that was a neat, neat way to mix up the, the bushwhacking paradigm a bit. Anyway, uh, from that, I moved on to boss bushes, which are kind of in the similar thread as multi-hit bushes, but there's only one on the screen, and it's got a super big health bar. It might even be tied to, you have to complete, you have to find all the, the, the puzzle pieces to clear the bush. And it's got like a big health bar at the top of the screen. It's really cool. And it might in the flux dungeon, uh, give you like a unique reward for that run. 
which I thought might be a really interesting format to do. Uh, anyway, I finished a, a small hurdle with that this afternoon, and next week, uh, if I have time, there will be an update next Friday, so I'll be focusing on that, but between that, I'll hopefully finish up the rest of the Boss Bush's tech, and then after that's in, uh, I think most of the Flux dungeon should come together pretty straightforward, so it would be great to get that uh, later on this fall. Uh, speaking of the update... Next weekend, it will be the store update that a few people have been regularly reminding that they want to see more items in the store. Uh, the various stores, there's lots of stores. Uh, I don't think the general store will be getting anything, but like the Amicus Island store, the various merchants, the casino, the flux store, the burglary boutique, etc. So we'll have some things to fresh that, freshen that up. Um, and then, uh, the following week, uh, we're going to look at doing our fairly regular, uh, coffee break charity drive. Uh, it's where we raise money for Alzheimer's, uh, for the Alzheimer's Society of BC, I think. Uh, and with that, uh, you can buy coffee. It's an energy item. I'll help you out and all of our proceeds. So the money that we make will go to the Alzheimer's Society. And there's also a person there uh, that'll give you a free cup of coffee on the house uh, for your bushwhacking endeavors. Michelle says, my mom died of Alzheimer's. That's so sad. Uh, my great grandma had it as well. It's a very scary disease, uh, which is why we choose a charity like this. So uh, look, look out for that in the coming weeks. And if I don't get to your feedback, if I missed your question, you can always post on the forums. We do a weekly forum Q&A on Wednesdays, or you can email bw2support at codameentertainment.com, and I'll reply to it when I can. Michelle Girl, it is a very horrible disease. Uh, you're welcome. Doing a charity like that's the least we can do. Oh, uh, Nova Scotia Barb, yes, the VIP store will have some new items as well. Leaving well, Disco says, my mom died of breast cancer, which is worse. Oh, they're all awful. I think we can all agree. <laughs> all of it's awful. Uh, I think last year we did a, or the year before, we did a cancer charity drive as well. So we might look at doing one of those in the, the new year as well. What language did you write this game in, says Trians007? Uh, it's written in action script because it uses uh, Flash. Um, and our back end is in PHP and our chat server is in Java. All right, uh, did I miss any questions? Oh, so sorry to hear about your mom, Nanaimo Island. Yikes. Sending good thoughts to everyone's way who's affected by it. Um, so that's all the news. Uh, so we still got 20 minute, 19, 18 and a half. Uh, so I'm just going to cover some of the highlights from this week's forum Q&A. Remember, you can always see that on the forum uh, in our developer Q&A uh, thread section. Uh, so in that, uh, Adino brought up having better rewards for the Amicus treasure hunt for high level players. I definitely agree that should be a thing. Uh, I think those rewards should probably scale with your level like a bunch of other things do. I don't have any plans to do so at the moment, but it's on my list to consider for a potential quality of life update in the future. I don't know if anyone has any comments on that, but we all like scaled rewards. Uh, they, it was specifically about the gold you get from it, I think. It was like 100 or 1,000, and by the time you hit like level 200, it's, it's a measly pittance.
Bye, Black Crafter. Oh, Nova Scotia Barb is 22 years cancer free. Congratulations. Um, next thing on the forums was a uh, vegan 1964 asked if we could offer a combo pack for buying both the event mount packs, like you can the pet packs. Uh, I got nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, we added the pet packs just because it was like a bigger savings because it's three packs you can buy in one combo pack. Uh, but I don't see why we couldn't also offer that for the two mount packs that typically go out for events. So maybe I'll look at doing that for Halloween, which is the next event coming up. And the Cat Whisperer asked when the ghost pet will rotate back into Amicus Island's token store. It will for the next update. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, that'll likely be next week. And Flybaby asked for more variations of the baseball cap hats. Uh, that should be pretty easy, especially if they're like recolors and maybe like changing a logo around or some texture or whatever. Uh, so we'll look into adding those for a future update as well. So those are on our on the list for Georgia to look at as she tries to come up with more custom items. And Flybaby also brought up that Amicus, the Amicus Wandering Merchants don't seem to rotate predictably since we added the mechanic to the rotation. I haven't noticed this myself. I know it would definitely upset like the if they always aligned with like a certain day, then adding this one, uh, cause they're divided into left and right merchants. And we, so I think there's like, uh, four on each side. And then I added the mechanic to the left side. So that would have skewed the rotation. Uh, but I need to take another look at that algorithm that decides who and when they show up. So you're likely right. I'll take a look when I get the time. Uh, it's probably another like quality of life update. I don't think it's terribly pressing cause they'll still show up. If none of them, if one of them never shows up, then definitely let me know. I think that's a more urgent issue, but if they're just a little more wild, they should still be predictable in the, um, or they should still be shown uh, in the news. So when you first load into the game, uh, it's got the wandering merchant section. So and it says when they're leaving, who's there. So we've got the contractor for the next day and we have seven more hours with the tailor. And uh, Russell Denton mentioned uh, having more superhero costumes for Halloween, including an Infinity Gauntlet glove that would turn the bushes and critters you act to dust. That's a very cool item, and I actually think it might be a cooler effect for uh, like a permanent reward. On the lines of like for the High Jungle Quest Hub, we had uh, the final reward be the the black hole thing, and it would vacuum up all your all your uh, goobers instantly. So kind of like a convenience trinket. It might be cool to have that with the the glove. Though I know people don't like uh, convenience trinkets kind of taking up a slot that they could use for something effective. But someone's also mentioned that maybe we'd have like a separate slot for convenience trinkets. So you could put one of those in, which would also be very cool. Uh, kind of like a trinket accessories. Uh, something to think about. But uh, I think we, we've got a costume idea uh planned and i actually don't know which uh custom items georgia ended up settling on for halloween she loves halloween so i'm sure they're gonna be great uh but they may be superhero stuff i know we have a bunch of superhero stuff already and uh last one i have here is vegan 1964 again asked if they could decorate the buildings in the commons like christmas lights or flower garlands i think that's a really fun idea uh, i would i need to give a bit of consideration to how that would be done uh if it would be like an automated thing like how we change your ranch theme to be christmas or not we could have it like a the commons gets decorated seasonally or i don't know if they were thinking that they could like themselves, like go out to each building and decide what kind of decoration it has on it, which would be very cool and customizable. I'm always, or I'm always for customizability. 
Because sometimes, especially with certain holidays, like not everybody celebrates Christmas. So maybe not everyone would want uh, Christmas lights on their town hall. Uh, so I think the answer to a lot of those is just letting people customize it themselves. And it makes sense if you're the mayor that you would have control over decorating the commons. I think I think that checks out. Anyway, that's on a, that's, that's a would be cool to have list. Not a super big priority, but I think it's a very neat one. And catching up on the chat. Uh, lots of support for people shaking off the cancer. That's excellent. Good job. Lots of sympathy for parents with Alzheimer's or cancer. It's awful. Uh, Lynx is the hero spies a Finding Nemo reference. Oh uh, yeah, I think they're wandering around this area. Oh. oh, did they walk by me? Oh no, they could be anywhere. I actually think they spawned from this field. Uh, I could use... I have a hacker key. It reloads the game immediately. Or the area. There they are! Yeah, I knew they spawned here. It's Nemo and Dory. That's fun. I actually think uh, Kevin, who was a developer for Crusaders and now works on a different project, uh, he was the one who laid out these the underwater zones as a co-op. So he probably thought of and put in that little uh, Finding Nemo reference. I also wonder if he did the, the cool... There's a really cool ship cinematic when you leave the secret harbor, when things happen. Spoilers, beep. Uh, but if he schemed that up, I thought that was pretty well executed. Michelle girl, we do have an awesome community here. All right, well, that's uh, all the uh, highlights from the forum Q&A. It wasn't a terribly busy one. Uh, the previous week was much busier. Um, but feel free to ask whatever questions you need in there. I know typically we get more questions when there's an update or something and people can chime in on that. Oftentimes it's just a reminder to me to be like, hey, remember this thing we wanted several years ago? We still want it. Which I appreciate. I actually appreciate those. And uh, before I go on to maybe some past forum Q and A things, also let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, I just had to mention uh, my wife and I went to a local restaurant called Be Love, and I saw that they had a, a juice. They did like blended juices and stuff there. They had one called Bushwhack, so I just had to get it. I'm the bushwhacker tip. I had to get it. It was incredibly ginger forward and a little bitter. I don't know if there was like grapefruit in it as well. It was it was actually quite good after the first sip to acclimate my palate. Uh, but I really enjoyed that. Okay, it was a mixed review on the smoothie. I don't think I'd get it again, but the, the other food was there. I had a really good green curry dish. It was a good green curry bowl with like wild rice in it. That was delicious. Um, and yeah, I made my own homemade pumpkin spice latte today. I just used pureed pumpkin milk and spices and like microwaved it and then added some sugar and whatever. And it was, it was actually very easy and very delicious. Me and my wife are into the, the pumpkin spice lattes, the PSLs for the basic people like us. Um, all right, we have nine minutes left, so I'm just gonna kind of cruise through, see if there was any other top questions or anything made. I know there was a lot the previous week, uh, the week of September 8th, uh, we had a whopping three pages of replies.
Well, Michelle Gross says my brother thinks his cancer is back. That's awful. Make sure he gets tested and they can sort that out as best they can. Hmm. Um. Oh, maybe I'll go backpack. Oh no, this is usually when I go to the, uh, the drive, the secret list, the super list. Uh, my gargantuan players request list. Actually, I started formatting that into a different list that was more community friendly. Oh yeah, these ones are pretty fun. Uh, I think Russell keeps bringing up that we should have a, a pet collar trinket that lets you equip a trinket to your, your pet. So you get like one extra one associated and affecting that pet, which I actually think is a really cool idea. Another way to customize your pet. So I don't know. You can make it, well, it's kind of, I have to really think about that because the pet's effect is basically your effect. It just applies to you. So to have another trinket that would work on that pet's effect, unless I made like a, a new set of bonuses that specifically do that. I was kind of picturing, uh, you get like a proc nothing trinket on a pet. So whenever the pet hits something and gets a nothing, then it gets that special effect, which is kind of neat. Oh. Frenzy and 007 says with the action script. Can add-ons be made for bushwhackers? What kind of add-ons are you thinking? Uh, like I, we regularly edit the action script code and the server code, the PHP one, uh, to do new stuff. Like, uh, the whole new, uh, big bush and boss bush tech was, I had to modify both the PHP and the back end and the action script on the front end to make that work. Lots of sharing stories of cancer and lots of positive support for people afflicted by it or getting over it in the chat. And it's, it's great to see the community kind of doing that. Good job, you. Good job, you all. I think there was a lot of support uh, financially when we did the BC Cancer Charity. Uh, I think we did that when a player, uh, a long-standing player, uh, had passed away due to cancer back in 2019. I think we did another one, too. Twenty nineteen was the BC Cancer one. Oh, and we did a Terry Fox one for Terry Fox Day, uh, which I believe also deals with cancer. Uh, that was back in twenty eighteen, I think. It's so great to be able to do charity promos with this community because you're all willing to support it and it helps us give back. It's sweet. Uh, so Triazen, you're adding, you're asking if we can add quests or custom items using action script. We add quests and custom items all the time. Are you just asking for new content? More content? You're not alone. Uh, another feature I have here on my semi... The, the list I was planning to make public for everyone to view and vote on uh, was, uh, I kind of did this one. Are there some stores that don't say how many of a pet you have? I think some of the, it's mostly the, uh, quest hub stores. So if they have a pet or a mount, you definitely want to be like, do I have this one already? Cause they let you buy more than one, which we let you do so that you can release it for DNA. Uh, some games would call it like, so you can farm it. So you always have a reason to spend 
uh, the the hub currency you've accumulated. Um, but yeah, it's very important to know if you have one, if you're just on like a collection spree and you go back there and you forget. <sighs> uh, but if that's the case, you can always refer to like go back to Pagus and look at their list instead. And it's probably a lot easier to fish through there instead of traveling to each store separately and seeing what they have and if you have it. Because Pagus will say, well, you all know it. But I'll show you in the game anyway. Quick travel. Visit town. <laughs> oh, Triazen, you're asking if we do like uh, players can make mods and stuff for the game or add content themselves. Uh, I've seen that done with I know I was pretty impressed with Neverwinter had like a big community driven system, which kind of makes sense because they're D&D based. So they always have the like the dungeon master folks wanting to make their own content. Uh, I'm not sure anything's possible in the world of code. So I could definitely like whip up. Well, whip up probably makes it sound way easier than it than it really would be. But like an interface where you could kind of customize your own stuff. I need to build an editor for the players, which invites a lot of potential issues and bugs and stuff like that. I'm not sure we have the resources to support such a thing. Uh, I'm always up for people making suggestions on like what to add, but uh, I'd usually want to implement them myself and sometimes we don't have things and I have to add them, but I really do like the idea and you're all really creative. Like the fact that my suggestions requests list is as big as it is. And some of them are just like, it'd be cool if there was this quest that did this thing. Like even in this last uh, forum Q and a, uh, Russell Denton had like a funny quest idea with like the town crier being uh, Nate from the future. And it's like, there's lots of creative ideas. You're all very creative. Uh, anyway, here's what I was thinking about the lake. If you're looking to see if you can get a pet that you don't have already, you should probably use this. Uh, and misc is the category for you. Is it? Uh, is it? Yeah, so it's got like these salt desert ones. And they say uh, from the cenote site store, you have not owned this pen yet from the salt desert. It's a little vague, but like the Cenote site store is pretty clear that it's in the that quest hub. But that being said, the store should also tell you, and I'll try to figure that out. Anywho, that's all the that's all the time we have for. Oh, it's getting hard to talk. It's the end of the day. Uh, so thank you all for tuning in. Uh, it was my pleasure to hear from each and every one of you. The f sketches were fantastic. By sketches. I mean the coloring sheet submissions. Uh, again, uh, I will post this new one that Georgia whipped up for us uh, early next week. It's the Raccoon Scout. It looks wonderful. I can't wait to see what you all do with it. Um, so stay tuned for that on Monday via the socials. We'll post that on the forums and on the Facebook and we'll mention it in a game announcement. As always, we'd like to thank Sasha for moderating the chat today. Thanks, Sasha. Uh, Dylan and David for handling the technical side and to the whole CNE game streaming crew. If you like art streams, do yourself a favor and check out Crusaders Weekly, the Sketching Hour, Griddle Champions, and I noted it down, Sasha, Paint and Slay uh, on our channel. Those are all art related. You get to see lots of drawing, painting, doodling, uh, pancake arting. Uh, it's very cool content, very great hosts. Uh, they're just a, a joy to just listen to the banter and whatnot. So tune in to all that. Otherwise, uh, thank you all again. Uh, be kind, be safe, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend.